Thank you all so much for joining us for the Family Dinner Project. We're excited that you are here and going to cook with us tonight. We are from West Harden Middle School. I am Kristen Swords, one of the assistant principals. This is Kim Martin. She is one of our counselors. And then Lauren Christman is our family resource coordinator. Uh, we're very excited to bring this opportunity to our West Harden families, but also all schools and students for Hardin County. Um, we have purchased for West Harden families several copies of the Family Dinner um, book, and we are ready to give those out to you all if you participate in our cooking session virtually. And send some pictures of your family cooking our premier dish for tonight, which is the Bang Bang Chicken Parm. Um, we're very excited about this opportunity. We look forward to continuing to do this with you. And Ms. Christman's gonna talk to you for just a second about some other items that you can get to support family dinners at your house. Yeah, so in addition to the book um, for your participation, you'll also get um, this little unplugged box for meals. Um, so basically the whole purpose of it is you and your family members, so you and your kiddos at home, um, you put your phones in the box um, while you're eating dinner. So that way you all can interact with each other, talk about your day, um, and just have that really good one-on-one -on -one family time. Um, and then in addition, you will also get this flyer. Um, so it explains a little bit about um, the dinner table project and their mission. And then also um, it has some conversation starters um, and then some recipes as well. Um, and the whole reason we wanted to partner with Communicare Regional Prevention Center um, is just to really stress the importance of the family meal, especially during the times we're going through right now. And this is in collaboration with uh, the Title I and the Family Resource Youth Service Center at West Harden. Okay, and then before prepping for the meal and baking, be sure to make sure everyone washes their hands. So we wanted to start by sharing with our families an opportunity that we have for you. If you watch our cooking session tonight and then share on our school's social media pages pictures of where you and your family um, have created this same meal, then we will send you a copy of the family dinner. Um, these books that we have ordered for all of our families include great recipes. It also includes some tabletop conversation starters, some games that you can play as a family, um, and just some good points about what family dinners can do for a family as far as bringing them together. So we thought that it was important um, to pick our recipe that we're gonna prepare for you today out of this book since you'll be getting a copy of it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, if you see us looking at that, that's what we're referencing. Um, and we selected tonight to pick the Bang Bang Parmesan Chicken Dinner. So right now, um, we went ahead and have some water boiling for the penny pasta. So that's one ingredient, breaded frozen chicken breasts. We've got mozzarella cheese and then Parmesan cheese, which normally I would have bought the Great Value brand, but they were out. And then tomato sauce, which I chose to get the tomato basil garlic pasta sauce calls for six cups, so I got two jars. And then at the end, calls for parsley, we just chose to use the dried parsley. So we have the oven at 425, and we kind of did a part of this already, but basically you have it in the oven, it's gonna cook for 15 minutes. 15 minutes and then halfway through seven and a half minutes, then you're going to flip it, flip the chicken. And then after the 15 minutes total, then you'll take it back out. So we've already done part of that. So we'll go ahead and take that out. And while your chicken is cooking in the oven, you can go ahead and get your boiling water ready and you can go ahead and put your noodles in so that those can be cooking at the same time too. And then the next step is to place the chicken off to the side. This is a good opportunity. Um, I have a freshman now, but uh, he was once in middle school for his middle school families. I think it's really important to get the kids into the kitchen, um, having them help you with the measurements, having them help you with the time. Um, that's a really good skill for them. And a lot of the times if we're using a recipe out of a cookbook, I make him read the recipe um, out of the cookbook to me while we're preparing that so that he's involved in the cooking as well. So we strained the noodles and to save from having to wash another pot, we just went ahead and 
use the one that we boiled it in. So the next step is we're going to take part of our spaghetti sauce uh, or tomato sauce and go ahead and mix it in with the noodles and give them a good coating. And it needs four cups. So if you look at the serving size is a half a cup and there are five servings. So that means two and a half cups in a jar. So makes that a little bit easy. Yeah. Well, you want to, I'll let you pour yeah. that in and then I'll measure out a cup and a half. ahead and start coating it. So we're just going to give it a good stir to make sure all of our noodles are covered well. And then earlier, like the recipe had called for, we took the chicken patties that we had cooked out of the baking dish um, so that now we have room to put our noodles back into the bottom of the baking dish. We're just going to go ahead and pour these in here. Pour the pasta into the baking dish, and top with the chicken breasts. Smells good already. It does. All right, what's okay, next? So the next step is to put the chicken patties back on top of the pasta. And then we're going to top those with half a cup of Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. I'll let you Which Ms. That. Martin has already yes. measured out for us. So we're just going to put that on top of the patties. Always add a little extra cheese because we like cheese. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then we're All gonna right. put it in the oven for 15 minutes. Okay. Technically you don't have to do the 15 minutes like the recipe says, but just enough to get the Parmesan to kind of melt. But this is the pre-shredded, so I don't think it melts as well. Okay, and then the next step is to pour the remaining spaghetti sauce. And between the two jars, it's really just five cups, but the recipe calls for six, and it just depends, you know, on your taste if you wanted to do a whole other cup. But as far as making it a little cheaper, not having to buy a third jar, two will get you by. And I'm gonna go ahead and open, it calls for 12 ounces of mozzarella. This is 16 ounces. We're just going to go ahead and pour the rest of the tomato sauce on top. And then I just am going to use the bottom of a spoon to smooth it around a little bit on top of the patties to make sure they get lots of flavor on them. Okay. Then I noticed the tips on the recipe say, you know, if you're a vegetarian, you could use vegetarian meatballs or they evidently make breaded uh, eggplant, that you could use that on this. And you could even try to sneak in some vegetables with the whole dish. A salad would be a really good side item to go with this dish. And then it's ready to pop back into the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes to melt everything together. And you should start to see it bubble um, as it's cooking. Okay, so our 10 minutes has elapsed and we're gonna go ahead and pull it out of the oven and get a serving of it so that you all can see what it looks like. And Miss Martin, we did go ahead and sprinkle some dried yes. parsley on top too while it was finishing up in the oven and baking. So as you can see, the noodles have cooked very well, almost like a lasagna. Oh, that looks good. There we go. We've got the chicken patty on top with the melted cheese and all of the panay noodles and sauce down on the bottom. Looks delicious. So with a side salad, they have your vegetables and yep, voila.
So for the dessert for the meal, we've chosen to make called Nana's Happy Chocolate Chip Cookies. And this is found on page 213 of the family dinner book. So what you'll need is a lot of basic baking ingredients. So you'll need eggs um, and then butter, flour, brown sugar, um, and baking soda as well. Um, and then you can kind of freestyle a little bit by using 12 ounces of any type of chocolate you want. Um, so we have semi-sweet chocolate. I think that's the best. Um, but if you wanted to use white chocolate or milk chocolate or anything else, really, you could incorporate that into the recipe. So before you get started, you really want to make sure you preheat your oven. So that way you don't have to wait for it to heat up while you're putting all of your stuff together. Um, so the first step we have is after we preheat the oven, we use a separate bowl because you're going to have two separate bowls going at first. Um, you're going to have a separate bowl to mix the chocolate chips. So this is a 24 ounce bag. Um, so, and it calls for 12 ounces. So me and Kim decided we're just going to do half the bag and hope that's right. <laughs> mm, little more. And it's okay if there's extra because he yeah. doesn't like extra chocolate exactly. chips. Exactly. Extra chocolate chips isn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Next, we're going to do the flour. Okay, so we need... And I'll read it to you, because this yeah, is, this is something be... you could do with yes, it's your hard. kids at home. Just have somebody stand there and read. I think Miss Swords may have mentioned that, too. Yes. So, let's see. Two and a half cups. Two and a half cups. Awesome. So, there's one. And remember, with flour, you don't pack it in there. You just level it. Yes. All right, and there's two. Then we need to get our half measuring cup. All right. There's two and a half. Okay. What's now, next? Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. There's that. Baking soda is really the magic for this because I'm pretty sure they wouldn't turn out right if we didn't use it. Okay. Right. And then a teaspoon of salt. Okay. I'll take this and I'll mix this while you're getting the other ingredients ready. Great. So okay. now in our second bowl, you're going to mix the butter and it, yes, it is three sticks of butter. So this definitely should be, these should be good cookies between yes. the chocolate chips and three <laughs> sticks of butter. Let's put three whole sticks of butter in. All right. Do we mix it with anything? Or do and then you're going to do an, a cup of sugar. Okay. Regular sugar? And brown sugar. Okay. Yes. Ours is already in a bag because Kim measured it out for us, but you're just going to want to measure a cup of sugar out and then get it in with your butter. And then a cup of brown sugar. And you definitely pack down yes. the sugar. Because brown sugar is Good super stuff. sticky. When I cook at home, I have sugar everywhere. Same. Definitely not Betty Crocker. That looks good to me. All right, and now our brown sugar is all packed. We're gonna dump it in. You're gonna mix that together. So she's using her hand mixer to mix together the butter and the sugars. Then once that's done, she's going to add two eggs, and it says to mix vigorously until all well combined. Okay, so now she's gonna fold in the flour and chocolate mixture. And while she's doing that, I'm going to spray the pans. <laughs> you can use any type of spray. You could use Crisco, shortening. Yeah, you always wanna spray your pans or you'll end up with a big mess. And once we do that, I like this. It says, if you have the patience, chill the dough in the fridge for at least half an hour. 
Well, who has patience to wait on that for another half an hour? I'm gonna switch to the spoon. But I also like the tip at the bottom. It says pull off a large piece of wax or parchment paper along the bottom of the shortage, put a roll of cookie dough, and then you could freeze it and then make them as you have a craving. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, don't even have to defrost it. You can just simply slice it from the roll with a serrated knife and put them on a cookie sheet, bake it eight to 10 minutes from frozen. Uh, the next thing is to drop grape size balls onto a greased baking sheet. They'll spread, so we're supposed to space them about three inches apart. Okay. And I will help you. You're going to want to have multiple baking sheets for this because it's a whole lot of cookie dough. There's just so many ways you can make chocolate chip cookies, though. But I this always is something up, kids could do, too. Oh, yeah. You know, helping. Kids are great for baking because you can have them help measure things. This is what I always had my daughter do. So we can make these two pans and then freeze the rest if you wanted to. Yeah. That way you have fresh cookies. So now that we've got our cookie dough on our sheets, we're ready to go into the oven at 350. And for how long? For, let's see, eight to 10 minutes. Eight to 10 minutes. So depending on how you like your cookies, I would keep an eye on them. Um, ovens definitely vary, so you wanna watch your cookies while they're in the oven. Um, but we cooked ours at about 10 minutes and they turned out pretty good. Um, we've also had a few people taste test them here in the kitchen. Um, so yeah, they turned out pretty good and this is the final product. I'm gonna showcase some artwork from West Harden Middle School art students. Ms. Jaeger is the art teacher there and her students have been working on a variety of techniques. I'm gonna start by showing some line dot pictures. Um, students had to use both lines and dots to create their image, and the lines are like the work of Vincent Van Gogh, and the dots are like the work of George Surratt. So this is the first art piece, and this was created by Ashley Morales Perez. This is the second piece by Madeline Powell. This piece is by Lily Miller. This piece is by Angel Miller. We have a piece by Austin Weiss here. And finally, this piece by Andrew Richardson. I would also like to share with you all some color wheel projects that her students had recently created. Some students um, had the option to be, get really creative with it and they decided to make a 3D color wheel. And so this is an example of that by Josie Burkhead. So it has all of the images of the color wheel. She tied in the theme of sewing and it has a 3D effect in several different areas. And then other pictures, the students decided to have the eight color schemes in the back of their color wheel. This piece is by Tessa Burbank. This color wheel and schemes are by Presley Ferguson. We have a piece from Cadence Miller. This piece is by Mary Strong. This piece is from Raylan Brackens. And then we have another piece from Lily Miller. And then finally, we have some mosaics that were created with technology. And Ms. Jager decided to do this project because students went to NTI for a period of time and she wanted to see what their students could create in terms of art with technology. And so students used Google Drawings and shapes to create mosaic pieces. As you can tell, they got very creative with the topics that they selected for these. Some are real world, things that are important to them or that they have interest or hobbies with. We all know some of our fondest memories come from being around the dinner table. So even just if you can't sit down with for a meal together, at least cook together. 
um, and at least maybe at least once a week try to have a meal as a family. So we would like to thank the Extension Office for allowing us to use their kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank and be you. sure to look at the website for the link to the recipes we did today. Hello, it's me again, Tony from the Hardin County Extension Office. And we are doing the dinner table project once again. And I would like to thank all the participants that came out tonight to prepare um, such delicious meals um, and desserts to go along with the meal. And also, I just wanted to mention about to make sure that you look on the Hardin County Extension Facebook page because there's always ex exciting things going on um, for adults on down to kids. And our family consumer science person, Dana Fentress, has some wonderful ideas for kids to do. So continue to look on there to see what she has to offer. Not only that, but also with 4-H, with Marla Stills and Stephanie Meredith. And once again, we like to thank all the participants for the dinner table project thus far. We have a couple of more weeks to, um, to go. So you might wanna um, see about talking with Cheris about signing up or participating. It is such fun on a Tuesday night we get to have the whole building to ourselves and cook and have fun. So I look forward to hearing from y'all. If there anything that I can do for you here at the Extension Office, just feel free to call and I will do my best to assist you. And if I don't know the answer, I can point you in the direction of someone that can. And y'all have a good night. <laughs>